This is Michael from NCY Store. Okay, as far as the compression goes, this is actually a GY6 full secondary sheave assembly. Uh, this is actually just kind of twisted off and taken on there. So you're saying you're having a little trouble uh, putting it on there. I don't think it has to do with the pins. I think it just has to do with pretty much like you mentioned, right? So yeah, probably easier with two hands, but you just got twisted on there. There you go. That one came on there. But again, this is not from a PCX, so this is a full. And then this is the original GY6 as well. You can see there. See, it just glides on. Now, I'm going to have a hard time getting off. Now, you are probably trying to put this, if I'm not mistaken, even when there's a bevel lip right here, but you mentioned, right, the golden one won't fit. So I'm going to just try to simulate it. See that? So that fits right in. That's what it should have done for you, but unfortunately, it didn't do that, did it? So, and then it locks the ball bearing. So it doesn't need a cap anymore. That's the thing. That was the old school way, unfortunately. So you can use your existing GY6 one. Let's see here. This one, same thing. So again, it's supposed to fit right in there like that. It just, and then the ball bearing gets course It glides in there like this. But for some reason, your lip on your PCX is a little different secondary sheath. So I'm thinking, if you ever get like an old GY6 sheath one right here, uh, and see if that will actually fit in there. You can just easily just put the ball bearings. It's probably harder to do. You might have to turn it upside down like this and then feed the ball bearing in there. Once you get the ball bearing, it's kind of tricky, right? Because you got to, or you can put it up like this. It'll get into the groove. But however, this thing will probably shift the ball bearings out. You can see how it digs in. It'll probably like all of a sudden the ball bearing gets in here. It just shifts it out. So that's not going to work either. So the only other way to do it is protect it. And I'm surprised that lift didn't let you do that because it seems like this one right here. See that? It goes right in. Ball bearing goes underneath. Then the compression spring goes here. And then it just glides. Just, well, allows it to glide anyway when the ball bearing's in here. It just allows this whole thing to turn nicely and smoothly. <clears throat> so when you can get the compression springs in here like this. Now, another way you could do it, though, uh, it's to do the opposite because well it might kind of chitter out a little bit but i think it should be working let's see what you could do is let's bring the secondary sheave assembly and once you get down here it'll lock into position it's not going to let it move much anyway so let's say you put this in here like this you can see that the spring just goes right into the groove i'm surprised if you can get the groove of the spring in there this thing won't let you go all the way down that's kind of interesting then what you can do here you can lay the ball bearings straight up on top the reason why i do that is because again this thing has a hook and the bar bearing might fall on there and put all the ball bearings in here if you can and then you can set your clutch so again this works as a pretty much a cover plate that's why they don't use the old scowl anymore it's more minimalistic and then when you put it in here like this careful once you get in there it's locked in so there's no way of the ball bearing to escape it's a flush back this whole thing is his back plate right then you just push down on it. you could do it that way either way and they'll still twist because the ball bearing will allow it to move and rotate so that's another way you can avoid it if you can't fit it underneath here okay